So I think one of the most insulting things other than calling the fans of a certain IP racist is when you try to attack the owner or the creator of that IP and call them racist too. But the fact of the matter is they are no longer part of this world. They are dead. They're not even around to defend themselves. And I think that is probably more insulting than anything else. If you call someone else racist who is still alive, who is still capable of defending themselves, that's one thing. You're still stupid for that, but that's one thing. But the fact that you have people coming out and trying to now attack J.R.R. Tolkien by calling him racist, that is really, really low. That is like literally a desperate play from Amazon to try to keep the, the, the controversy going, basically, to try to manufacture this backlash and then try to claim victim by calling even the creator who's not even around anymore, who was born in a completely different time period than the woke Amazon time period. They're going to call him racist and basically try to smear his name. Mind you. They have no problems buying the rights to an IP of a supposed racist creator. Isn't that interesting? They have no problems buying the rights for that IP because they know they can make bank off of it, but they still want to call that same person's racist after they bought the IP and, the, and some of the rights to it. It's insanity to me. So we're going to get into the article, guys. But of course, before we do, if you're new here, consider hitting that subscribe button. I would greatly appreciate it. Don't forget to like the video, comment, let me know what you think of today's story, and let's get into the video, guys. All right, guys, say this article comes from Bounding Into Comics, and it says, Deakin University lecturer Helen Young accuses the Lord of the Rings author J.R.R. Tolkien of racism, anti-Semitism, and Orientalism. So it's funny to me that, of course, I mean, listen, all these woke universities, you know where they stand, okay? Politically, you know where they stand. It doesn't have to be mentioned. It doesn't have to be brought up. You could just take one look into their classrooms, and you're going to see every single pandering flag imaginable, and you know exactly where they stand. But for them to come out and attack a known author who is no longer able to defend themselves, who is heavily loved amongst multiple different diverse backgrounds of people, goes to show just how simple-minded someone like Helen Young actually is, especially for a university lecturer. It's interesting. So it says, Deakin University lecturer Helen Young recently accused Lord of the Rings author J.R.R. Tolkien of racism based on his condemnation of Adolf Hitler and the Nazis, as well as his depiction of orcs and dwarves. Young wrote an article in the conversation titled, The Rings of Power is Suffering a Racist Backlash for Casting Actors of Color, but Tolkien's work has always attracted white supremacists. In this article, the subheading, Why Do Races Like Tolkien in Middle Earth? Young takes issue with Tolkien's statements denouncing not the Nazis and the Arpithed writing, but this is not the same as being anti-racist or, or pro-equality. She goes on to cite letter 45 that he wrote to his son Michael in June 1941. She writes, his condemnation of Hitler, he wrote in the same letter, was for ruining, perverting, misapplying, and making forever a curse that noble northern spirit a supreme contribution to Europe which I have ever loved and tried to preserve in its true light. Young then asserts that the comment shows that he believed that some people were essentially different to and better than others. This notion is foundational to racism. First off, acknowledging that some people are different to others and some people are better than others is not foundational to racism. It is a common sense observation that anyone can make. Not everyone is Michael Jordan. That's true. That's 100% true. Michael Jordan clearly had a talent for basketball. and He excelled in the sport, becoming arguably the greatest basketball player to play the game. Michael Jordan is clearly different from Helen Young, and he's most definitely better than her at basketball and probably at a host of other things, including business as well. People being different and some being better at some things compared to others is simply a fact of life. Well, that's the thing. A lot of these people are Marxists. They don't want to admit that that's how things go. They want to pretend like everything is supposed to be equal, yet they're the first ones who will never give up their own money. They're the first ones who will never give up their own way of life. It's amazing how these people who succeed and breathe and live capitalism, they also want to pretend like capitalism is the most evil thing in the world. They want to pretend like, oh, everybody should have equal outcomes, but they're not the first ones to help those people who are in need. They're not. They're the first ones to go on Twitter and say that they're going to help those people in need, but they're not actually going to do so. So it's funny to me how people like Helen Young want to come out and talk about equality of outcome when they are living probably a very good life and they are more than capable of helping others, but they don't want to actually do that. Because there's one thing to talk on Twitter and talk about it and try to virtue signal about it but it's another thing to actually do anything about it and that's the problem in minority communities nobody actually wants to help people just want to say they want to help 
If common sense isn't enough to realize that people are different and some people are better than others, Catholicism of the Catholic Church makes it explicit. On coming into the world, man is not equipped with everything he needs for developing his bodily and spiritual life. He needs others. Differences uh, appear tied to age, physical abilities, intellectual or moral aptitudes, the benefits derived from social commerce, the distribution of wealth, the talents are not distributed equally. The Catholicism further asserts these differences can belong to God's plan, who wills that each receive what he needs from others, and those endowed with particular talents share the benefits with those who need them. These differences encourage and often oblige persons uh, to practice generosity, kindness, and sharing of goods. They foster the mutual enrichment of cultures. As for Young's issue with Tolkien wanting to preserve the noble northern spirit, there is absolutely nothing wrong with it. In fact, earlier in the letter, he highlights some of the virtues of that noble northern spirit as seen in the Germans who are his enemies during World War II. Tolkien writes, people in this land seem to not even yet to realize that in the Germans, we have enemies whose virtues, and they are virtues, of obedience and patriotism are greater than ours in the mass, whose brave men are just about as brave as ours, whose industry is about 10 times greater, and who are under the curse of God, now led by man, inspired by a mad whirlwind devil, a typhoon, a passion that makes the poor old Kaiser look like an old woman knitting. He would also conclude his letter to his son, noting nowhere incidentally was it nobler than in England, nor more early sanctified and Christianized. Nevertheless, Young continues her attack against Tolkien, accusing him of Orientalism. She writes, good, species and races in Middle Earth are constructed through references to European cultures, especially Northwestern Europe, and the bad races are constructed through Orientalist stereotypes. But you know what's incredible? This is someone who probably has never done anything in their life creatively. They, they, they you have no idea what they are literally talking about. They are looking at something through the eyes of a victim. They are looking at something through the eyes of a virtue signaler, if they're not a victim. They're not looking at it through the eyes of creativity. So they're trying to dig deep into his work and trying to find words of racism or words of bigotry that only apply to today's modern day. And honestly, it doesn't even apply to today's modern day, but the, you know, the woke people will want you to think it does. So that's basically what they try to do. It says Tolkien actually addressed this argument when he was alive. In letter 294 to Charlotte and Dennis Plymer, Tolkien provided feedback to them based on an interview they conducted. He specifically critiqued one portion of the interview that claimed Middle Earth corresponds spiritually to Nordic Europe. He wrote, not Nordic, please, a word I personally dislike, it is associated, though of French origin, with racialist theories. Geographically, northern is usually better, but examination will show that even this is applicable, inapplicable, geographically or spiritually, to Middle Earth. This is an old word, not invented by me, as reference to a dictionary such as a, sh a shorter Oxford will show, it meant the habitable lands of our world set amid the surrounding ocean. The action of the story takes place in the northwest of Middle Earth, equivalent in latitude to the coastlands of Europe, and the north shores of the Mediterranean. But this is not purely Nordic area in any sense, Tolkien elaborated. If Hobbiton and Rivendell are taken as intended to be at the latitude of Oxford, then Minas Tirith, 600 miles south, is at about the latitude of Florence. The mouths of Anduin and the ancient city of Pellegrin are at about the latitude of ancient Troy, he further explained. So once again, I, I, I can keep going and keep talking about it, but it's amazing how when the man was alive, he was able to defend himself with such class and explain his exact reasons for whatever he decided to do with his own lore. At the end of the day, it was his own lore he was trying to create. He was trying to build his own fucking like mythos. But for you to come out and try to attack him for that without having any true understanding of what he meant because you're looking at it through a modern lens, which is completely different than the mindset of what he had when he wrote it, that's insanity. That's insanity. It's like people going back in time and trying to look at how the world was in the 1800s and call everything they did racist without having any true understanding of what anybody was thinking about or anybody was doing at the time. They want to look at it through a modern lens without any understanding, and then they're going to try to use it to virtue signal to people on Twitter because that's what they want. That's really what they want. They want to be able to retweet, get likes, and all that stuff because at the end of the day, that's all these people care about. <laughs> so anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you did enjoy this little backstory into Tolkien, and if you did, consider leaving me a subscribe. I would greatly appreciate it. Don't forget to like the video. Comment, let me know what you thought of today's story, and I'll see you guys on the next one. Hypnotic out.